Hello everyone, it's Adam. Welcome back to Microsoft Azure Fundamentals course. As we move along the core services, we need to learn what are the options in Azure to store our unstructured and semi-structured data. So let's dive right in. So let's talk about storage services in Azure. Today we will learn about Azure Blob Storage and its storage tiers. We will also talk about four other services called File Storage, Table Storage, Queue Storage, and Disk Storage. But before we move to those services, let's talk about general classification of data. Our first type is Structured Data. For Structured Data, the idea is very simple. That means your data is laid out so nicely that you can describe it using specific schema. So for each table, each row of the table, you can define what are the properties of each row, what are the type of those properties, and each row that you insert into that table has to follow the schema. Additionally, if you have multiple tables, you can define relationship between those tables. This is the scenario that you typically see in relational databases. We will learn about those a little bit more in the next episode. Additionally, the second type of data is so-called semi-structure. In this case, you still have a table, but each row within this table do not need to follow any specific schema. That means each row can have its own unique properties. The only common property is usually some sort of key, like an ID column. So you can say this is a less formalized way of storing your data. And lastly, we have unstructured data. So data like images, movies, applications, so binary application files, TXT files, and many more files. Files that do not follow structure that can represent pretty much any kind of data. Which brings me to our first service, Azure Blob Storage. We were talking about this unstructured data and any kind of unstructured data can be called blob. Blob stands for binary large object, so any kind of file. And you can put those blobs into Azure Blob Storage into something called container. Container is just a bucket for multiple blobs. You can have more than one container with an Azure Blob Storage. And it is designed to allow both applications and users to work with unstructured files in the cloud. So Azure Blob Storage is simply a service designed to store any kind of file in Azure. Remember that blob is just a synonym for file because binary large object can represent anything really. Additionally, there are free storage tiers. Storage tiers allow Microsoft to provide you better performance and better pricing depending on how often do you access your data. That's why there are currently free storage tiers. And the first tier is so-called hot. You use this for your frequently accessed data. So if you're building web application and this web application is serving images to your customers, then this would be the storage tier that you would use because hot storage tier provides the best performance for your files. But if your solution also store files that are accessed less frequently, then you can use cool tier. With cool tier, you're accepting lower availability and lower performance for accessing your files while maintaining high durability and getting significant discount for storing that data. This is the perfect solution for storing older versions and backups for your applications. But if you have files that you never plan to access, like a very, very long-term backups, let's say backup that you need to keep for 10 years, then you can use archive storage tier. In this case, the availability is the lowest because retrieving that data might even take a couple of hours. But the price is also the lowest. You're getting 10 times the discount for storing data in archive tier. This really is the lowest price per gigabyte that you can get when storing data in Azure. And that's pretty much it when it comes to blob storage. The second service that we will learn about today is Azure Queue Storage. For Queue Storage, it's a very small service, but very significant when building applications. When you have an application that has several tasks to be completed, and each of those three tasks might take some time to complete. What you can do is output those into Azure Queue as a separate messages. This will allow background processes and other services to pick those messages from the queue at their own pace and let them process those asynchronously. This will not only offload your front-end application, but also allow you to pick more suited services for the background processing. So Azure Queue Storage is a service that allows you to store small pieces of data, so-called messages. 
so that you can build scalable asynchronous processing solutions in Azure. And that's pretty much it when it comes to queue storage. It's a very simple service with very specific use case in mind, and it fits perfectly in this kind of scenarios. So the next service on our list is Azure Table Storage. This service was designed with semi-structured data in mind so that both users and application can output this semi-structured data form into tables. And this table is part of table storage. Of course, you can have more than one table because table storage is just like a database where you store multiple tables with your data. Just remember this is a semi-structured database. So there are no joins, no schemas, just your data in a simple storage. This kind of databases are also called NoSQL databases. To summarize, Azure Table Storage is one of the storage services in Azure for your semi-structured data needs. So you can work, insert, update, and operate on the data in a semi-structured form. So remember, you use this kind of database when you don't need stuff like foreign joins, foreign keys, relationships, or when you don't need to follow any strict schema. Additionally, this service is designed for fast access. So if you would store petabytes of data, you would still get your data within milliseconds if you would use compound key to access that specific rows. So it is quite scalable, even though it's a simple service. And similarly to blob storage, Microsoft provides many programming interfaces and many SDKs. So it's very easy for your developers to use table storage when building solutions in Azure. Which brings me to Azure File Storage. This service is similar to Blob Storage, because we already said that Blob is synonym for file. So what's the difference between Blob Storage and File Storage? So let's talk about the semantic differences first. In File Storage, instead of Blobs, you store files. Instead of containers, you have shares. And instead of Blob Storage, you have File Storage. So semantically, they're pretty much identical. They work almost identical. The only difference is the way you access them. In case of file storage, you access your shares via SMB protocol. So this is a simple file share service. You might remember file shares when you go to, for instance, your Windows PC, right click on your desktop and select Map Network Drive. When you do it, it will appear in your PC just like any other drive on your machine, except it's a remote drive somewhere on some sort of servers. In this case, that's exactly what Azure File Storage is for. So Azure File Storage Service is a service that allows you to store files, files that will be accessed through shared drive protocols. Whether you will use Windows or Linux machines, you can take advantage of File Storage Service. There are two common scenarios that this service was designed for. First one is extension of the on-premise file shares. So if your company already has file shares that are used internally and they just need to extend those file shares with more space, they can leverage Azure File Storage to do that. And the second very common use case is lift and shift. Lift and shift means that you already have existing applications and you don't want to redesign those applications to take advantage of blob storage, but you still want to extend or move files to Azure. In this case, you use Azure File Storage to mount it as a local drive. You point your application to the local drive. They use native functionalities. But in the end, this share is in Azure. So automatically your files are saved to Azure. This gives you ability to take advantage of Azure features without any need to redesign your existing applications. And pretty much that's the major difference between the file storage. You use file storage if you need that shared drive protocol. If not, you design your applications and use blob storage. Which brings me to Azure Storage Count. All the services that we learned about today, blob storage, table storage, queue storage, and file storage are part of the bigger service called Azure Storage Account. Storage Account is simply a collection of services, including those four that we just learned right now. They are designed to allow customers to store files, messages, and semi-structured data in Azure very easily, very effectively, and at high scale. And that high scale is quite high. We're talking up to petabytes of data. But not only it scales very high, it also has high durability. 
we're talking about 11 nines. So if you pick the lowest replication on Azure Storage Account, which is locally redundant storage, by default, this provides you 11 nines of durability. So the chance that you lose your data is astronomically low. You could pretty much say impossible. But we all know nothing is impossible. But if you want, you can pick even better replication settings going up to 16 nines of durability. And by default, this is the cheapest per gigabyte storage in Azure. And if you take advantage of blob storage tiers, you can get very low price for very large amounts of data. Let me show you how easy it is to take advantage of Azure Storage Account. Inside of the Azure portal, you can go to the menu on the left hand side, select create a resource to go to the marketplace. An Azure Storage Account can be found on the first place in the most commonly used services section. When you select it, you need to select a resource group. Let's create a new one. I will call this AZ900 Storage. Let's hit OK. And now we need to provide a name for our Azure service. In this case, I will call it AZ900 Demo Storage. As you see, this name is already taken, so I need to pick up a new name. So I will just call it AZ900 Storage 123B. Looks like this name is available. Now I will choose location. For me, this will be West Europe region. You can pick some other stuff like performance, account kind, replication settings, and below you have access tier. Those are the storage tiers that we're talking about. And this is where you pick up the default storage tier. So that means all the files that you will upload to this storage will take this setting by default. In this case, all the files that we will upload will be put into hot storage tier without any additional setting. So let's leave that as is. Let's review and create and hit create. Creation of storage account takes about a minute, so we can wait for that. After the service has been provisioned, we can select go to the resource to review our storage account settings. By default, on the first screen in the essentials section, you will see the four services that we just talked about. The containers is the blob storage. We have also file shares, which is Azure file storage. We have tables, which is the table storage and the queues. For now, let's move and open containers and let's create new container. This is a top level bucket for our files. Let's call it demo and hit OK. We can now open demo container and upload some sort of file. Just pick anything from your drive, hit upload and you're done. Your file now is in the cloud. So as you can see, usage of blob storage from user perspective is simple. So let's move back to the storage account, to go back to the resource and let's select file shares. In this demo, I want to create a small file share in Azure and mount it to my local machine by selecting new file share, giving it name demo share, giving it a quota of maximum 10 gigabytes, and hitting create. Now to mount this share, I need to select demo share and open it. Inside of demo share, I need to select connect button. And in here, Microsoft provides me out of the box scripts for each different operating system. For Windows, this is a PowerShell. Simply select, copy to clipboard, switch to your Windows machine, open PowerShell, and just paste in the script. By default, this script will first test the connectivity and then mount the storage. If everything works correctly, you will see message on the screen that the new share was mounted. You can verify that by going to your computer, to this PC, and you will see new share attached. You can even open that share and create a small file, like a demo.txt file. So let's call it demo. If you did it, you can now go back to Azure portal to verify that this file was saved directly in the cloud. Close this panel, hit refresh, and as you see, you were able to attach a share and save file directly to Azure, just like a normal file on your normal drive. Before we move back to presentation, let me show you one more quick demo with storage account. Let's go back to the resource and open Storage Explorer. It's a web tool that allows us to review everything on the storage account, all the blob containers, all the file shares, and even tables. So let me create a new table called demo table to hold my semi-structured data. Hit OK, and the table is created. 
once the table is created, you can start adding new rows. By default, each row has to have a compound key containing partition key and row key. This value has to be unique, but you can add additional properties like name. In this case, let's call it Adam and insert that data. Once you do it, you can add additional row. So let's add one more row and let's change name to surname and type Marchak, which is my surname. And assign values for partition and row key to have unique compound key. And we can hit insert. Notice that we are not validating any kind of schema. So the first row could have name, second row could have surname. There's no validation for the semi-structured data. Of course, Azure storage account doesn't end here and it has a lot of a lot of additional features that allows you to take advantage of this highly scalable storage in the cloud. But for now, let's move back to presentation. Our last service for today is Azure Disk Storage. Azure Disk Storage is used for virtual machines. When it comes to Windows virtual machines, you probably remember that you have multiple partitions like C, D, E, etc., etc. All those partitions are stored on one or more disks. In Azure, this is done via Disk Storage Service. This storage service is simply set at disk emulation in the cloud, allowing customers to attach a persistent storage for their virtual machines, both for operating systems and their application data. And disks in Azure come with different sizes, different types, so you can pick either SSD or HDD and different performance tiers. Of course, the bigger and the more performant the disk is, the higher the price. But it's still good that you have that choice because you can make the choice to grab this slower disk for your non-critical systems and development environments. And lastly, disk storage allows customers to store their disk in unmanaged or managed form. Unmanaged means each disk is stored as a file on a blob storage. It's called unmanaged because it is not managed by cloud provider. Customers are responsible for managing those blobs and those drives and the storage accounts. Or you can use second, more popular option now, which are managed disks. That means Microsoft is managing all the blob storage, all the files and all the services behind the scenes, giving you a separate resource called managed disk, which not only hides the complexity of managing the disk themselves, but gives you some additional features, which is very nice to have. So let's do a quick summary. Azure Storage Account is highly scalable and highly durable group of services for unstructured and semi-structured data management. So if you need general purpose file storage that fits pretty much any scenario in Azure, you can use Azure Blob Storage. If you need to take advantage of file shares in the cloud for lift and shift scenarios or extension of your on-premise file shares, you can use Azure File Storage. Additionally, if you're building scalable asynchronous processing architectures, you can use Azure Q Storage to deliver a service for very small messages and process offloading. If you need to have a small, simple, yet scalable NoSQL database in Azure to store your semi-structured data, then you can take advantage of Azure Table Storage. And lastly, if you have virtual machines and you need to provide a persistent drive for those virtual machines, a simple disk emulation service in the cloud, then you take advantage of Azure Disk Storage. As always, go to my website to check some extra material study guides, practice tests. And in this episode, I also attached a lot of my videos covering those storage services in more detail. Now that we have covered basics of Azure storage and how to store our unstructured and semi-structured data, we can move to databases. So in the next episode, we will get overview of Azure database services. For now, that's it. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to support the channel. To follow to the next episode, either follow the playlist or click the icon on the side. And see you there.